Welcome everyone. Welcome to the College Information Night for the parents of the class of 2021. Um, for those of you I haven't met, my name is Brenda Posnanski and I'm the Director of School Counseling and Admission. And along with the other counselors, Mr. Mullen, our Associate Director of School Counseling, and School Counselors Lisa Futrell and Ron Noel, we are thrilled you have taken the time to join us tonight. So thank you for being here. Although we wish you were here in person, we are very happy to sort of see you. Um, it's been a long time, and so we're happy to, to share with you our information tonight. Uh, we have so enjoyed having the students back in school and have already started to meet with many of the seniors um, about this process. So um, things are starting to roll. So tonight is jam-packed with information. We have a lot of information to share, and um, we hope that um, the format that we've chosen will be helpful. So the plan for tonight's program is that it is divided into two sections. The first will be an overview of information that each of the counselors will share. And the second part will be heading into individual counselor Zoom rooms um, with your students assigned counselor. Here the counselors will talk about their process of working with your son or daughter. We do have a chat, the chat feature turned off for the first part of this presentation and ask that you reserve your questions for when you are in the counselor's Zoom room. And that, that's what's gonna prompt the conversation. We have the link to the individual counselor's Zoom room in the agenda and we will go over this again before we divide the group. So now we have some housekeeping things to take care of. Now that we've had the housekeeping things taken care of, let's um, all take a huge cleansing breath. This is gonna be okay. You're in good hands. We've done this a long time. We have a lot of information that we want you to know and share, um, but we also know that this can be super stressful. So we ask that you take a big breath and just be with it. And trust us, um, this time next year, Sans, sans COVID, hopefully, um, all your, your sons and daughters will be on a college campus. And you will feel that this chapter is over, this high school chapter is over, and, you, and you, you'll be sad. <laughs> you'll be sad that it's over. And, but the problem is you have to get through the book first, and this is the book part. So we're gonna get you to that chapter that you're gonna feel sad that they're leaving and that they're, this, this whole call about high school piece is over, but um, we gotta get through this, the first um, few chapters first. Um, so where are the students now and where are you now in this process? Well, you're probably further along and seemingly more concerned than your daughter or your son might be. Uh, well, believe me, you are. Um, this doesn't mean that Students aren't doing anything or they're not worried, that they are, they are just not as intentional about their concerns about the college process. They are 17 and 18 year old concern, which is different than an adult concern. They're, they're just back at school, sports have just started, jobs may have just finished for the summer. They've had a long summer, longer than it's been in a long time. They think they have plenty of time, and yet you are ready to pull out your hair because you're looking at the calendar, you're looking at what they need to do, and you're thinking that there's not enough time, and they think there's plenty. You're worried about all the adult things that go along with this process, that, and that, those are the things you should be worried about. Clearly, you and your child probably are not operating on the same page and, and going the same speed. If, if you are, that's great. Um, but most of the time at this time, it's okay that you're not on the, at the same place, that you're not um, traveling at the same pace. Believe us when they tell you that they have been doing things. Um, they have been building lists and taking virtual tours. And they've talked to their counselor. They may not have told you this, but, but, they, but they may not have told you, but we know that they are doing, they are doing it and they, are, they too are processing. They're just processing differently than their parents are. All we can recommend at this point is patience. Patience and love them. That's all we can ask you to do. Um, so use us to help. We want your relationship with your child to remain intact 
throughout this senior year. And we are here to be the nudge, the bad guy, the nag, the voice of reason for you both. So feel free to use the counseling staff, especially your student's counselor, to walk through this process if you feel like they're not doing anything. Sometimes they are and they just don't tell you, so, so fear not. Um, so what has happened so far um, to help students and, and what's planned ahead? Um, students have received information from us all spring and summer. They may or might not have told you that either. We also have offered Zoom meetings throughout the spring and summer. We, are, we have a very, very robust counseling page that is found under, under the Students My BG page. This information has, um, this, um, so this part of the um, counseling page has a lot of information on testing, virtual college fairs, scholarships, um, and, and just so much more. Um, essay writing tips, all kinds of things. If you haven't um, seen the counseling page, um, we will sh show you that throughout tonight, but it's really a very good place for all the information to sit. So you don't have to look around to a lot of different places. It's all there. If as soon as we know something, we put it onto the counseling page and it's update daily. We have some activities planned for next week to go over the common application, the actual process of getting materials sent to colleges, letters of recommendation, essay writing, and any other questions students may have. We're gonna talk about this a little bit more throughout tonight's agenda. So um, you'll know what's gonna be happening. The students have also started to make appointments as I said earlier. So we're having one-on-one -on -one conversations with the students as well. So obviously COVID has changed many, many things in our lives. And I hope that you and all your family are, are healthy and safe and have weathered this crazy storm um, in a positive way. But we know it's been tough. We know things are really different. We know this has affected the class of 2020 mm -hmm. dramatically, but we also know that it's gonna affect the class of 2021. It has certainly changed the landscape of higher education in general. Mm -hmm. And indeed the admissions policies and procedures for most colleges and universities. There's a lot of information out there about how colleges are managing COVID. As you know, many colleges have changed things like deadline dates, testing requirements, campus visits, and, and lots of other things. Um, we know that campuses aren't necessarily housing all their students this year, that there was a long drawn out um, process of moving in. Um, more and more classes are, are remote, more and more classes are hybrid. So there's lots of changes afoot. It is important though for you to use the college website to find the updates um, to all of these areas in the process because the colleges are, have been very good about communicating it. So it's really important that you keep close to those websites. If it's on the website, it's true. So, so students, uh, students need to do it. We direct the students to the website. We look at the websites when we're talking to students. So it's important to use the college websites as your source of information. Not Huffington Post, not New York Times, not CNN News, not Fox News, go to this college's website. That's where you're going to find the most information. This does not mean your daughter or son will be any way disadvantaged in this process. Colleges have assured students, have assured us as counselors that they are working very hard to maintain consistency while also being very flexible in a time that is incredibly uncertain. It's true many students did not return to campus or decided to do a gap year this year um, or to defer their admission. This does not impact the freshman class typically. Um, colleges have caps on how many deferments they allow. They also have caps on how many students take gap years. And if you were part of the college admissions pro um, presentation we did over the summer, um, there was the gap years are are very slim. There's not a lot of places the students can go to do their gap year. So gap years are not quite as um, robust as they've been in the past. 
There is also not, no guarantee that once a student decides to defer or take a gap year, that they're ultimately going to enroll in that university or college. So colleges are still looking for a very strong class for the fall of 2021. They have some catching up to do from the fallout of, the la of this past year. And it could, say, could be said that they may be more open and more forgiving than ever before. This is yet to be determined because we don't know for sure, but the way colleges are sending us information as school counselors certainly has told us a lot of information about what they're, what they're gonna be doing as they move forward. A few questions came through um, when the parents were registering for tonight and they are fearful that their student will be disadvantaged because of the state of affairs. And, and we honestly think that that's gonna be not the case, that the students are going to be evaluated. Um, colleges are in the business of accepting students. They want students. Um, so I think that you're gonna find that, that colleges are gonna be very, very, um, very thoughtful in, in their process of, of evaluating students this year. Big, big question out there is obviously testing. Um, this, is, this is a big, the biggest worry that everyone has is around the SAT and ACT from what we can determine. This is kind of perplexing because there is so much evidence out there that supports the students um, given, because of the situation and because it's out of the student's control that colleges are going to be very understanding about testing. College, like I said, college admissions offices are in the business of accepting students, not disadvantaging them so they can deny them. They are absolutely not in the business to do that. It may seem that way because there's a lot of colleges, kids, students apply to a lot of schools and sometimes they don't get into the college that is their dream college. But that's not, doesn't mean that they're not getting into college. It may just mean they're not getting into one or two of the colleges. But colleges are not in the business of disadvantaging students. They are, there is no way, if, an, if there is no way a student can take an SAT, it will not dis, in, disadvantage them. On the contrary, if they were able to sit for an exam and did not get the score they wanted, they don't have to use it at schools that typically they would have in the past. This may enhance their opportunity. So we can look at this two ways. There are many schools in the past that SAT was very much part of their criteria that they have now taken that off the, off the table. Schools where a really good student sometimes didn't get in because of their SAT scores. That student is going to be evaluated for their daily work from their transcript. And that's going to need to be an advantage for them. Colleges are saying they're either test blind or test optional. And for some of these colleges, they're saying it's just for this admission cycle, this year's admission cycle. So for the for the for the class of 2021. But what they are saying is true. If they are test blind, or test optional, they are telling the truth. That is what they, they are practicing for this year. There is no hidden agenda. Test optional is if you have scores and you want to use them, you can do so. If you don't have scores or you don't want to use them, no problem, you don't have to. That is a decision that you can make with, your, with the school counselor and the student and we've been, we've been working with test optional schools for years and years and years. Test blind, some of the schools are test blind. This is a little different. Test blind means that they are completely taking this out of the admissions criterion. Even if you send the scores, they are not going to look at them, which means that they are not even considering test scores in the process. Absolutely not part of the evaluation. I have some things I just wanted to share with you. This is a list of schools based off of fairtest.org. There's about 2,000 schools 
that are test optional or test blind this year. This list is a pretty, pretty good list. This list is a list of schools that many of our students apply to. And the list goes on. Some pretty strong schools there. You can find all this information on fairtest.org. What I did is I went in and um, pulled out schools that many of our students, more common schools that our students apply to. And it ranges from everything from an Ivy League to a small private liberal arts college and everything in between. So as I was saying that, that schools are really committed to helping the student this year, given the fact that testing has been, been so difficult. And I'm also going to share something I've been putting together for a few days, if I can find it. Oh no, where'd it go? Okay, here you go. This is information that, can you see that? Can everyone see that? Um, so this is information that I've put together. This is just over the last week. We have received information from all these different schools talking about their test optional or test blind decisions. Now in the state of California, it's actually gone to their, um, their state Supreme Court that they cannot use SAT or ACT in the admissions process and or for merit money. So just wanted to share that with you. So for most, so most colleges um, are, you know, each college is different. So there is a number of articles that are out there on each, art, a lot of schools. But look at the, like I said, look at the college websites because that's going to give you the most information. For the most part, colleges are assuring students that they're not expecting required scores for certain majors, merit money, merit scholarship considerations or honors level placement. This is different than it's been for a lot of schools. Schools that we never thought would go to this um, practice are doing it for the class of 2021. So what are they gonna evaluate the students on? Well, when evaluating a candidates um, for the colleges are going to pay close attention to curriculum, grades, and holistic information such as activities, leadership, involvement in school and, and community, and the common app essay and supplements. Things they should have been looking more closely at from the start. And we're just glad that this year, this class is gonna have that opportunity to really shine in those areas. We have been working with the college board um, since June to secure BG as a private test site. This would this we we had, you know heard recently that we've been denied, and we could not do a private testing site for our students, but we could be a public test site. This would mean no advantage to our students. So after weeks of trying to convince the College Board we wanted to be private, um, they said no, we could be public, and this would mean that students would sign up and hope for the best. So they would apply to their College Board account and sign up for a test and get in a queue. So it could be that 200 students were ahead of them and none of our students were able to test here. Given we're not allowed to have visitors in the building, we, didn't, we um, decided not to go ahead with this because it, would it just wouldn't help our students out and we just didn't see this as a good option. We have secured a school day testing day for October 14th. This SAT administration is for seniors only. October 14th is national testing day and our ninth through 11th graders are already scheduled to participate in the PSAT administration that day. This is not mandatory for seniors, but any senior that is interested must sign up by September 15th, which is next Tuesday. Registration will go live tomorrow morning on the parent portal 
as there is a $55 charge for the student to sit for the exam, which is the fee that College Board incurs. So um, look, for your, look for that tomorrow, but that's going to be a hard, I have to make sure I put the order in by September 15th. So I have to know how many students are going to be testing. So that's kind of a hard deadline. Merit money and financial aid. Um, colleges awards are always very individual. So this is not a universal thing that colleges do. Um, so every, Again, you have to kind of know what each college your son or daughter is applying to is going to do for merit money. And it is important to read the college's criteria for their merit awards and what that may be. Usually merit awards are awarded by the admission office to the top candidates in the applicant pool. And at times, SATs have been part of that Many colleges are telling us that that is not going to be part of it. Once again, as I said earlier, they are trying to give every, every student in the class of 2021 the, the best advantage they can. Again, this obviously depends on the college. And it also depends on the tier of the school it will depend on merit monies even offered. So um, small Ivies, Ivies, um, some of the more competitive level schools like a Tufts or a um, Carnegie Mellon don't typically have to worry about offering merit money um, because they, they fill their classes without, without it. So again, um, it depends on the school. And so you really need to follow, follow their, their website for updates on that. As for overall financial assistance, um, please join us for our virtual financial assistance information night. It is on September 22nd at 6.30. And our guest speaker is Karen Collins from the NEEF organization, the New, Hire, New Hampshire Higher Ed Assistance Foundation. And she is um, gonna walk us through the um, FAFSA form, talk about scholarships, talk about the CSS profile, and any questions you might have about financial aid. So please join us on September 22nd at 6.30 and more information will be coming out next week. So at this time, I'm going to pass it over to Mr. Mullen. Thanks, Brenda. <clears throat> so first and foremost, what I wanna talk about today is kind of the college process in a broad sense. So the first thing we wanna have the students do is set up appointments with their counselors so we can talk to them individually about kind of what they've done, where they should be going and what we'll do with them along the way to kind of help them and hopefully make this process as painless as we possibly can. Um, the big thing is that, you know, we're available to them at all the, all the time. The one tweak we kind of changed this year with the set up the appointments is in the past, we used to have them like come down to our offices and like that could result in a lot of kids being in there at one time. So because of COVID, we're changing that up. So I sent out an email to, this, to all the seniors last week kind of explain the process so that they now can email us or if they see us in the hallways, we can, we can talk about times. And then basically we're trying to make it more streamlined. So we're gonna ask them to email us and then we'll send out an invite to them that they accept that then appears in both of our calendars. And then all they have to do is come and see us during that time and they can block it off for as long or as little as they want. And that'll be their appointment time. Uh, and hopefully again, doing this will kind of get them one, using their phones for email, which is gonna be important with the college process because that's going to be how all of the colleges communicate with all of the students. They're not going to text. They're not going to do anything else. They're going to email. So it's really, really, really crucial that they utilize their email and they use it effectively, which is why we're trying to use this with them to kind of get them used to responding to emails and agreeing to things and then showing up or being responsible for when they have to be there at certain times. When we meet with them, obviously we'll talk about the college process itself. So a week for, or on September 15th, we'll be having a program similar to this, but it'll be for the students. And we'll kind of explain what each of us does with our individual caseloads and what our expectations will be for the college process, the timeline of events and what they need to be doing, could be doing and will be doing between now and basically the first of the year and sometimes later than that. Um, and then the following day on the 16th, Brenda kind of touched upon it. We're gonna go into each of the study rooms and we're gonna have them work on their Common App with us in the room. 
So we're going to, we're going to send information out at the end of this week or early next week as to what they need to bring. It's basically like a checklist, but the more information they have, the more they can get done on that day. And if they bring all the information on the 16th to their studies, they can probably get done 60 to 75% of the common app so that when they're actually working on the essay, which is where most students struggle, they'll have time to kind of work on it with their English teacher, with us if they want to, um, or whoever else they feel comfortable working with on the essay. So again, that information will be sent out either later this week or early next week as far as what items they'll need to bring. Um, and again, if they have questions, please encourage them to come see us or reach out to us, whether in person or email, because we're, we're here to help them and we're trying to make the process as smooth as possible for them. The next thing I want to talk about is the college list itself. So uh, Brenda, can you stop sharing your screen so I can show the score? You might do you mind. So one of the things we are, is that's different this year is in the past, we used uh, Naviance as our search tool. And for, for parents of, of older siblings, we kind of went away from that. So the thing we're doing now is we're gonna use SCORE. And we found that SCORE is a more user-friendly uh, search tool and way to process information for the students. So what we're gonna have them do is use SCORE for pretty much everything they would have used Naviance for in the past. All the seniors have already logged on to SCORE once or multiple times in their high school career. So if you ask them about it and they say they don't know what they're talking about, that's not true. We went into every one of their studies pre-COVID last year and we had them log in to SCORE. It's just S-C-O-I-R.com. Most of their usernames is their BG email and their password is gonna be their BG password. When they log in, they're gonna see this information right here. So this is our fake student that we have. Um, and as you can see, it has all the information on it that Naviance has. We just find again that it's in a more user-friendly kind of interface for the students. The important thing is this is how we, the counselors, will process all of their information. So we'll send their letters of recommendation through SCORE to the college that they're applying to. The teachers who they've already agreed to will submit their letters of recommendation to the counseling office and then we will upload them to their accounts. So the students do not need to ask for anything else in regards to letters of recommendation. I know Mrs. Futrell will talk about that a little bit more in detail later on, but we will upload every document for them through SCORE and then when they apply, that will link up with their Common App or their Coalition App um, when, when the college starts to download everything. But if you were to go through SCORE itself, if you go down here to Colleges and Applications, this is the student portal. Again, I, I should probably back up and say, this is a student portal. There's no access for parents. So again, if you wanted to use it, you can use your son or daughter's uh, username or password, but there's no information or no portals for parents to create. But if you were to click on Colleges and Applications, what you're gonna see is four different things. You're gonna see suggested, following, applying, and then applied to. So basically, if a student was gonna build a list or if we're gonna meet with students, we would recommend schools and then we, we, the counselors or the students or you guys can add them to the suggested list, okay? All they have to do to add a school is just keep to keep moving it over is just move from one column to the other. And they're going to have to do this. So when they ultimately move a school from suggested to, let's say, applying to, and then ultimately applied to, they're going to have to move all that information from each single box over there. And then that's how we'll know that the information has been sent, or I'm sorry, is ready to be sent. All right. The other thing a lot of people have asked too is um, in Naviance, they had the ability to kind of research how previous BG students have fared at other schools. Mm -hmm. If you were to click on the, the scattergram, for example, and let's just type in New Hampshire. So if we go to, this, this goes obviously from 2006, but what you'll see here is all of the BG students that have applied, green is accepted, red is denied, and yellow is, is either not finished the application. But you can see all of their SAT scores and GPAs that were accepted. And again, all of the data that we have from the BG, from the students that have applied to BG is on here. So if it's a school that not a lot of kids have applied to or uh, nobody's applied to, we may not have that data. So your best bet would be to go to the specific school's website to kind of see that information. But I know that was one of the questions that people had asked in the survey. So if you were to go to colleges and applications and go to the scattergram, you'll be able to see all of the previous 11 years of data uh, for our students. Okay. And again, they can also do the colleges if they were to go to the matches and whatnot for search. So again, this is similar to the super match on Naviance, but again, the more information 
you were to put in in here along the left hand side, the more accurate and more refined your list becomes. Um, so you can just start to gather or you're, they can start to gather a more uh, precise list if they were looking for certain schools that had one major that offered a certain sport or activity or club or whatever, or a certain test score that uh, is information in there. And you can also see that these schools have their information on the, you know, alphabetically organized that they can see that as well. Um, and then if you would just go back to the dashboard, hold on one second. Again, you'll just see the overview of their information and they can add in their information themselves. And we didn't put anything on this student because it's not a real student, but they're, they have full access to add anything they want on score. And then it just might be easier for them, or we can also see the information, anything we need from them as well. And then I know one of the things that Brenda talked about was the school website. So the counseling page, I just kind of wanted to show everyone that in case you guys are unfamiliar with that, because there's a lot of information on that that is extremely beneficial for the students. So let me just pull it up real quick. So right here is the class of 2021 page. So every single class has their own page. And obviously the senior one has a bulk of the information relating to college and whatnot. But if you were to look at all the information that's on the download or links portion, you will see that we've been putting information on there pretty much throughout the summer. So we have the senior college timeline, which is what we went over back in January with everybody how to pay for college, score updates, fairtest.org. That's what Brenda was talking about earlier. This is actually the direct link to Fairtest. So if you had any questions about what schools are test blind or test optional, you can click on that and it'll take it to you. There's ways to help, help them with their college application and essays. There's uh, already a scholarship on there. So any scholarship information that we get is gonna be posted on this page. So again, it's really, really important that they are using this page effectively because we get a lot of information that's sent to us and we will post everything we get to kind of help them and offer them as much information or potential money that we can to um, various schools. There's also campus tours. Like Brenda said, a lot of schools are offering either virtual tours um, and some are offering face-to-face, -face, but you can see the options for virtual tours at numerous schools. If you were to click on any of these links, it would give you all the schools that are offering virtual tours. And then all they have to do is just go to the, the specific link and then sign up for tours and they'll be able to see kind of, you know, a 360 view of what the schools are offering and maybe sometimes even interact with people while they're on it. And um, again, it's just ways for them. They can take advantage of what's on the counseling webpage. If they were to look at the right-hand side, the downloads, they'll see a couple other things that I know Mrs. Futrell will talk about, but it's the same thing. It's a lot of information um, regarding test optional schools, letters of recommendation, transcript request forms. So any information that we feel relevant to the seniors we're going to put on the website for them. Okay. So, and then as far as the college list itself, I know that Mr. Noel is going to talk later on about what, how to build a viable list. So I'm going to pass it on to Mrs. Futrell, who's going to talk about the college application itself and kind of what the nuts and bolts are of that. Thank you, Dylan. All right, so I am going to go through what they need to do when applying to college. Um, and so there's a lot of information that needs to be shared on this part because this is what they are actually in the process of doing now. Um, and so the first thing I'm gonna talk about is a common app because the common app is what they've all started to work on or will be working on next week. So the first thing is um, there are many colleges that use the common app. It's the universal application and they fill out this application and they can use it for all of the colleges. So they fill out one application and it goes to many colleges. And one of the things that the Common App has is supplemental forms attached to it. So if they apply to 10 different colleges and those 10 different colleges have supplemental information, it will all be linked to the Common App. So it'll take the general information for that school and then add the other information that they need um, for any other school. So if they're supplemental, forms or supplemental essays, all of that will be found on the Common App. So it really is the go-to for many schools and for many students. There are other schools that might have their own um, applications that they want. Um, and so we go through those with the um, students. So a big school that a lot of our students who apply to um, is Endicott and they have their own private um, 
platform that they use. So they do not use the Common App. There's also the Coalition App, which is similar to the Common Application um, in terms of you can use it for a number of schools as well, um, but it's not as widely used as the Common App. So I do have some things that I'll share with you um, in terms of um, forms that we have. Um, I'm not sure, let's see if I can get to my share screen. All right. All right, so. So the first thing I'm gonna share with you is, um, and this I actually found on the Common App. When we meet with the students next week, we're gonna be asking for them to bring details with them um, that they have to add into the Common Application. Um, and it really is, like data entry when you fill out this form. There's a lot of drop downs and information that they have to fill out. Um, and it's, it's pretty lengthy, but it's pretty self-explanatory. So this sheet tells them what they need to bring in terms of filling out um, some of the pieces of the common application. Um, so this first sheet just gives them information about um, GPA and, and information that goes with that. We use a weighted GPA, so that's all they really have to worry about. Um, and we can tell them where to find that. It's actually, um, they can find it on MyBG and we'll share that with them. Um, but this is all the high school information and we'll be sending out information on this so that they know um, what they need to put in there. Um, and they can actually find this on the website as well. Um, so we send them this information because all of this is on the Common App. They need to know what it is so they can put this in. Um, so we give them this information so that when they're sitting there with us and they're filling it out, it's right at their fingertips and they're able to fill out the application and get that process done pretty quickly. So this is the school information that we'll give to them um, when they come to meet with us or when we meet with them next week. Um, and again, you know, this is stuff that we will um, help them find online um, and help them find within my BG. So the next one I'm gonna show you. <clears throat> this is really the important one that, that gets um, students stuck. Um, and so this first one um, just sort of is a checklist, but this is the information that we really find students struggling with. Um, and you'd be interested to know that a lot of the kids do not know what you do for work. Um, and so we ask them to find out, what do you do for work? Um, because they'll say, I have no idea what my parents do for work. So we ask them, and so if you're thinking about it tonight, maybe you can let them know what job you do, what your title is, where you work. Um, so all of these questions, occupation, job title, education level, um, you know, where you went to school, the college location, um, all of that is the information that they need. So everything on here is very important. And if they have it at their fingertips, it makes it so much easier when they're going through the process of filling out the application. Um, there are drop downs. So for some of it, if you know, if you're if you have an MBA, it's a drop down. Um, if it's something a little more unique, then they might have to type it in. But for the most part, um, there's a lot of information that it's pretty easy to put in. Um, then they have to put activities. So we have them jot down their top activities. They can add 10. So the 10 um, activities that they have spent most of their time in. So the ones that they have committed most of their time um, with is what we encourage them to put into these spaces. Um, so if they've only done something for a month, it wouldn't be something I would put in. But if it's something that they've spent, you know, 12 years playing a sport, then definitely that would be high on their list. Um, if they've only done a few things, that's all right too. But this is the space where they want to put those activities, their clubs, their sports, volunteering. Um, and they can put it in, you know, I would say the hierarchy. Where is their commitment been? And sort of put it that way, you know, their highest commitment sort of down the ranking that way. Um, but this gives them a, a place to put at least five of them. Um, and it's a good way to start thinking about the things, you know, and prioritizing what's important in terms of that, their activities. So um, we'll share this with them as well so they can start thinking about that in terms of preparing their application. The next form I'm gonna show you also comes from the college, uh, the Common App. And this is a 
um, college requirement worksheet. And this I just thought was interesting because it sort of gives them a breakdown of things they might be looking for in terms of colleges um, and what the colleges are looking for. So um, there are some colleges that don't require um, letters of recommendation or maybe require one. Um, and so this is just a way that they can check off things that the, the colleges might be looking for. Um, so that's just some basic information on the Common App. Um, and like Mr. Mullen said, we'll be going into their academic studies next week and going through the process with them. Um, many of the students that I've talked to already, and I know that um, Mr. Mullen and Mr. Noel have um, told me about that they've worked with, have already started the Common App. It's very important that they write down the username and password and they keep that in a safe place because they should only have one Common App. If they forget it and they start another Common App, um, that creates a lot of chaos. So having just one of these is really critical um, to keep all the information in one place. So um, that is the common application process. And as I said, it's the most widely used application. Um, and I wish when I was in college, I had this instead of the typewriter type because it was, this is so much easier because you do it one and you can send it to many schools. Um, so we will be doing this process again next week with the students and going through all this information with them. Um, there are other applications such as a VIP or a priority application. Those typically come to, through, to the students through their email. So again, another good reason that they need to check their email. Um, if they get a VIP or a priority um, application, sometimes those applications will mean that they will waive the um, cost of the application and they may look at it sooner than other applications. Um, it will come directly from the school. So it will be a, um, an application that you fill out. Usually it's their own um, personal application. Sometimes you can use it through the common application, but it might be a special application that you need to fill out. And when you're doing that, um, and I'll go over this a little bit later, but when you're filling that out, there's a special thing you have to do when you're going through the process of um, doing the application and the paperwork for us. But that application, um, if you get those and it's a college that you are interested in, it's definitely worth taking advantage of that because the fees that you pay for some of these college applications can get pretty hefty. And if you're applying to 10, 15, you know, 16 colleges and spending 50 to $75 per college, um, that free application or the VIP uh, priority application can be really handy if it's a college you like. So keep those in mind and make sure your kids are checking their emails because colleges will send those out to them through their email. Um, the next thing I wanna talk about is deadlines. And I'm gonna go back into um, our, the class page. And if it'll let me sign in, it may not let me sign in. Um, and show you deadlines so that you are aware of the deadlines that we set. So back on the, the class page, under downloads, we ask students to fill out a form called the transcript request. And this is a, um, the transcript request is something we have the students fill out in order to let us know that they've applied to a school and that we need to process their transcript and send it to that school. So for any student that's applying early action um, or early decision, which an early decision college um, is a school that you're applying to and it's a binding application, meaning this is a school you want to go to. And if any other school accepts you, you will take your application out of the application pool. So it is the school that you want to go to. Um, and I know a lot of schools are taking early decision and changing it and they're doing more early action just because of COVID. So again, you have to look at the, the college website and we will look at that with students, but early decision is binding and early application is just you find out sooner than regular decision. So early action is or early application is if it's a November 1st deadline, then your information to us, so meaning your transcript request asking for the information to be sent needs to be in by October 2nd. If it's November 15th, then it's October 20th. December 1st is November 1st and so on. So it's really a four week turnaround. Um, 
And it seems like a long time, but we get a lot of students bringing in a lot of information for a lot of applications. Um, and so we need that time to process everything and make sure that we can get all the letters of recommendation, the transcript, and every other piece of information together so that we can send that um, through our portal to get to the colleges. Um, and if students, they don't have to have their application done, they just have to let us know they are applying. So even if they haven't completed the Common App, we can still have this paper and have that transcript request in and make sure that we can get that process rolling for them, even while they work on their application. So it just gives us a heads up that they are working on that to get that application in by the November 1st deadline. Um, and there are certain um, majors such as nursing or physical therapy, occupational therapy, um, some engineering programs that may have those early action deadlines. So you really want to be aware of your deadlines when you're applying to programs. Um, and so that is something that we will again be talking with the students with to check your deadlines and make sure you know what your application deadlines are and when the deadlines are for your forms for us. All right, the other thing on this um, page is the letter of recommendation. Um, so we have um, mentioned to the students and there are still some students that have not done this process, um, letters of recommendation. Um, I know for my students and I know that Mr. Noel and Mr. Mullen have also sent out um, emails to parents and students if they have not asked two teachers for letters of recommendation that they have to get this done. And they can do this process online um, right here through the, the um, class page. Um, if they click on this link, it will bring them and it tells them how they can ask for a letter of rec recommendation and fill out the paperwork in order to do that. Um, those were due um, in the spring, but there are still some students that haven't done that. Um, I know there might be kids that aren't sure about you know, what their plans are for the fall, but we do encourage them to ask a couple junior teachers um, and they, they can still go back and ask those teachers, but we really need to have those forms in and have um, that process done as soon as possible. Um, because if, if we don't have that and they apply to college and we don't have letters for them, it makes it really difficult to try to scramble at the last minute to get those done. So if you did receive an email from one of us saying, you know, we have not received that from your student, could you please check in with them and say, you know, we went to the meeting, we talked about this, could you please, you know, go and see your counselor because we really wanna make sure that we get those letters in for them as soon as possible. The next thing I wanna talk about is FERPA. And FERPA is um, the waiver that the students will be signing when we go to the Common App. Um, and the waiver they sign is um, letting colleges know that they will not be looking at their letters of recommendation. We have them sign the FERPA and waive their rights because if a college believes that the student has in any way seen the letter or had any um, say in the letter, then they're gonna disregard the letter. They wanna know that the information they're getting on the student is, you know, factual and from the school and the counselors and the teachers. Um, we, you know, are there, we're in the process of there to, in, in our job to make sure that we um, are putting the students in the best light and we work well with the students and we, you know, sit down with them, we get to know them. Um, they, they come meet with us, we do questionnaires. So we get to know the full student and have a, and you know, um, very good background on, on who they are as students. Um, we also um, have them fill out the information on a letter of recommendation for the teachers and they put more information on that as well so that the teachers have um, more information than just what they've done in class. Um, so it's really important that they, the colleges get a very um, honest and um, just a very honest and unbiased look at the student. Um, and so that's why we have them sign the FERPA release. Um, and the last thing is the essay. Um, although I'm gonna go back and show you the one last thing I wanna show you is the transcript release form, um, which the students will be filling out. Um, and this is not the actual one. So when we do the transcript release form, 
Um, this is the old one. We're actually making it online now. It will be a Google Doc, but it's not completed yet. Um, and so I didn't want to put that one up until it's completed and approved. But this is the transcript release form that they will be filling out for us. Um, it will be very similar to this. And this form is what they fill out so that we know that they're ready to have us send the paperwork. So it's pretty much just a, it used to be in triplicate, but like I said, we will have this um, online and we will have them fill out all the information, how they're applying, um, which way they're applying. And again, this way we know how we have to send information. Certain um, ways, like if it's a, um, if it is a college specific or elite and priority, sometimes we have to send that in the mail. If they're a transfer student, we have to make sure we send their um, former school transcript as well. And then we know when we have to send the letters of recommendation. Um, and then we use this part for processing. So that um, goes as well to, um, um, we keep this as far records and then we know when we've sent things and we can keep track of when things have been sent. Um, and the last thing is the essay. So the essay is being worked on in many of the classes right now with the students, their literature classes. Um, I know that's a very taxing and overwhelming process for the students, um, but I know that the teachers are doing a great job and they do every year, um, getting the students to really focus on making the essay about themselves because that's the hardest piece of this whole process. And they really need to focus on how to write an essay and really make it about who they are so that the counselors and the admissions officers can really glean from that, you know, what is the student all about? Um, and so they will be working on that over the next month, month and a half. Um, those will be done by, I know, I think it's about mid-October so that they will be ready for that November 1st deadline. So I know that um, that process is um, started and if not, it will be started shortly for many of the students um, in their literature classes. So that is um, pretty much where the students should be at when it comes to the essay process. Um, and that is about all I have on applying to school. And now Mr. Noel is going to talk about what the student's role is in terms of um, creating their list and building their list. Thank you very much, Mrs. Futrell. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, thank you for taking the time to come and join us tonight. Um, so I'm just going to put up our agenda real quick. <clears throat> um, so as uh, we've highlighted tonight already, um, since January, the last time we all met in our BG gymnasium, um, in our college kickoff presentation, uh, we started talking about making, making appointments with your counselor and how important this is. Since then, we have been meeting with your seniors um, talking about, you know, what they are interested in, what they're thinking about on um, schools that they may be potentially interested in. In SCORE, we've started building um, that suggestion column with them, talking about those different schools um, that they are interested in um, attending. Um, we mentioned a lot about building that viable list of different schools that your students should be thinking about. This list should be in a mix of different schools that would be considered either a reach, a target, or a likely school. Um, these, uh, these schools um, have different criteria, which Mr. Uh, Mullen and Ms. Futrell have been pointing out, um, where you can find this information both on the school's actual website, on SCORE, and also on uh, collegeboard.org. Um, I've pulled up one school for you just to see a little bit of that. Um, if you're in College Board, you search for the college. I'm using Merrimack uh, for this one. And when you're looking at Merrimack, I've clicked on the applying column and it gives you a lot of information about how many applications they receive, uh, what they admitted, um, how many have applied, whether it's early decision, early action, and they talk about their application requirements. Students can toggle through these different tabs up here and it will show you what they are going to be looking at. Um, students should be having these discussions with the, you, your parent, the parents, 
um, now about their lists and the schools that they are thinking about. Parents, you should be honest about them, about the schools and where they want to attend and what is actually viable. This could be, is this a school that we can actually afford? Is this school someplace local or far away? I know when I was a uh, graduating senior, I want to get as far away from Massachusetts as possible. And I did so, and I went to um, a school in uh, Florida for my undergrad. Little did I know, we didn't do enough planning with my parents because in that year, there was a total of four hurricanes. So after each one, we were notified that we had to pack up our stuff within 24 hours and evacuate from campus. For me, a thousand dollar plane ticket one way from Florida to Boston was just not in the cards. <laughs> and especially to try and think about that four times. Um, luckily there's plenty of shelters. I've made some friends down there and was able to fare out the storms pretty well. But that's one thing um, to think about too when we're talking, when you're talking to your students about, you know, the um, advantages and disadvantages of either going away or coming home. Because I'm sure they also don't want to have, be going to a school maybe like St. A's, which is down the street, knowing that you're just going to randomly show up on a Friday night and say, hey, how's it going? Because I'm sure you're probably just as excited to get them out of the house. <laughs> um, so a good list is gonna balance a mixture of these schools. Um, I can't give a definitive answer because every student's situation is going to be different in how they're building their list. If I could give a range, I would say the average student has about eight to 15 um, colleges on their list with about two to four schools in each, um, in each of the categories that I mentioned. Um, and also as Ms. Futrell pointed out, you know, with all the schools that you're going to, your student is applying to, think about the cost for that application fee 10 schools at $50 a whack, that's $500. And we haven't even seen the tuition bill yet. So just keep a lot of different things in perspective too when we're talking about this. Um, again, going back to uh, what Mr. Mullen was highlighting with SCORE, um, looking at that scattergram, um, that is a good way to pull up the school's information to see which one of our BG graduates were applied and were accepted to, denied or waitlisted at different colleges. Um, so that would be a good way to kind of look at these lists and compare your student with to that scattergram. Is this something that, you know, we could actually see for you getting into or maybe not so much. And again, having these conver candid conversations also with us, the counseling staff, we're more than happy to um, be able to talk to your kid, your students one-on-one -on -one and let them know, you know, some of our thoughts and point out some of this information. Um, uh, when you're looking at your schools, again, going back to what I brought up uh, with Merrimack is to uh, look, at, uh, look at and understand the admissions criteria for the different colleges. All this information is located here and also on uh, SCORE as well. So they will be looking how they are evaluating your student. Um, we will be going over this with your students again uh, next week. We will be setting up a Zoom sessions uh, with students. I believe it's next Tuesday evening um, to go over a lot of the material we're covering right now, along with understanding and talking about SCORE in the Common App. And then the next day on the 16th, we will be moving into their study halls and to start going over the Common App itself with them and answer any questions uh, that they may have about it. Um, as Lisa pointed out, please make sure that students are aware of deadlines, uh, especially particularly with the college application deadlines and um, what we're asking for the transcript request forms. College, applica college application deadlines are pretty firm. Um, so we just wanna make sure that they are aware of the, those deadlines for our students. And then finally, um, our role as counselors. Um, we are here to um, be supportive of you and your student through this entire process. 
as I said, we have been meeting um, with your students and we would like to continue to make sure that we stay on top of them through this process and making sure that they get all of their ducks in a row as this process can be very confusing and sometimes very stressful. We're there to help support and advise on building that list and making sure that the schools make sense for them and for your family. We're here to write recommendations and follow up with the teacher recommendations to make sure that all the information is on our end is together. Um, as Ms. Futrell pointed out, you know, if we haven't received anything from your student, emails have gone out to those students already regarding um, making sure that they fill, get those teacher, teacher letter of recommendation forms in. Um, and at this point, I'm gonna turn it over to um, Mrs. Posnanski. Ms. Posnanski, your microphone. I got. I'm. I'm back. I'm back. I'm just going to share the agenda screen again so that we can close. So um, the last thing we just want to talk about is the parents' role and what what that um, what that entails. Um, we know it's really hard sometimes to um, to stay out of this process that it can be really, really difficult to um, not try to control it because their students aren't doing exactly what you want them to be doing. Um, but we, we're gonna ask you to do that. That's what we're gonna ask you to do. So we're gonna ask you if you, and many of you have heard us say this a number of times, especially if you had other children that came through BG, um, or if you came to our January program, or the program over the summer, make an appointment with your child for once a week. Whatever night that works for all of you or afternoon or morning coffee or whatever it might be. If you're asking your son or daughter every single day whether or not they've um, done what you thought they should be doing with the college process, it's not you, they're gonna feel a lot of pressure and they're going to start ignoring you. It's sort of like if you're at work and you're, you, you're on a big project and your boss keeps saying, are you done yet? Are you done yet? Have you done this? Have you done that? All of a sudden it, you start to hide. You, you know, if you see them coming down the hall or they're going to give you a call, you, you, know, you, you hide from it. So they're going to do the same thing and it's going to start to get contentious. So give them the opportunity to show you some work that they've done by meeting with them only once a week you might see some progress. If you're not seeing progress, then you let us know. That's when we can be the nudge, that's when we can be the nag, and, and we, can, we can be sort of the hard line. Um, just support your son or daughter in this process. You know, this isn't easy for them either. You know, they're, they're leaving an environment um, of, of safety, right? They're, they know what to expect. Well, before this year, <laughs> They knew what to expect every day when they walked in the building. It's a little more challenging this year with us, um, with what we are trying to do um, every day and not knowing if we can all be in school and that kind of thing. So, um, but normally they kind of know what to expect when they come to school. They know they have their classes, they know where their locker is, they know um, what, what the expectations are, um, that kind of thing. Well, they don't know what all of that's going to look like a year from now. They don't know um, where they're going to be. They don't know what their dorm is going to look like. They don't know who their roommate's going to be. They don't know if they're going to get accepted. So a lot of times when students are going through this, it's or anybody, think of yourself. Think of how we have been for the last eight months not knowing, not knowing how this how our world is going to move forward. What's going to happen next? When's the next shoe going to drop? The big black hole of are we are we going to even have to be able to have holiday meals together? Things like that. That's how they feel about college. They don't know what to expect, and it's overwhelming. And sometimes when we get overwhelmed, we stop doing what we're supposed to be doing. We sort of freeze. We hit inertia. 
So all we can do is support the students in this process. It's easy to get mad at them, but we want to err on the side of supporting them. We are going to be here for both you and the, and the student. If it means that we have to walk through every page of the Common App, every one of us have, has done that for many students. We've walked through every page and they, Mrs. Futrell is right. They have no idea what you do for work. You must, you must go to work in the, in the dark of night because they have no idea what you do. Um, they have no idea what college you went to. So um, share that information because that helps us when, we, when we're trying to get um, their common app completed. Um, but we're gonna work with, with them every step of the way. If they need help with their essays, we will work with them with their essays. So again, just supporting the student in this process can be, can be a huge help. Communicate with us if you have a question. Anytime that you have a question, we are all really um, available on, on email. If you have a quick question, you're, you're in the middle of doing the Common App one night or during your, your nightly meet, your weekly meeting, um, and you have a question, just shoot us an email and we'll answer it as soon as we can. And um, try to stay calm. Just try to stay calm. I know it's hard. This is huge. It's a huge family decision. Not only is it a huge family decision because of your son or daughter leaving home and going and um, you know building a list that, as Mr. Noel saying, a viable list that's really balanced and that they have a shot at, but it's also a huge financial commitment for any family. In every single way, this is a family commitment and we understand that. So try to stay calm. We, again, we'll support you as best we can and we will get through this. We will get through this. Um, we are recording this session tonight um, and we will put all of our shared um, screen documents up on the counseling page. Um, if you need to look at them or you wanna download them, um, they will all be up there by tomorrow. So um, you will be able to access them. We kind of flew through some of those. So we wanna make sure that you have um, access to them. So right now we are going to, um, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen but in a second, but we are going to go into the breakout rooms. Um, Mr. Noel and Mr. Mullins are, are separate breakout rooms. Mrs. Futrell and I are in the same breakout room and we're gonna just stay right, we're not gonna use this um, link, we're gonna just stay on the main Zoom call. So if your son or daughter has Mrs. Futrell or myself as a counselor, um, you would stay right where you are on the Zoom call. If you have Mr. Mullen, you're gonna follow his um, Zoom um, link there under Mr. Mullen. If you have Mr. Noel, you're gonna follow Mr. Noel's. If you're with Mrs. Futrell or myself, you're gonna stay right where you are. And we wanna thank you. Um, very much for joining us. Um, I just want to tell you what the what the chat rooms are going to be like. You are going to go to the chat. You're, I mean, the Zoom room. You're going to go to the Zoom room, and any questions that you have, start loading into the chat because the whole idea of of um, the separate rooms is so we can answer your questions. So it's helpful if you put them in the chat for us, and we're going to open the chat um, opportunity on the main one in just a second. So Mr. Mullen and Mr. Noel and all your parents, we'll see you later. Have a great night. Thank you. Thank you, Brenda. And if you're looking for um, the link, it's also in the chat right now for Mr. Noel or Mr. Mullen.
Once again, if you are going to Mr. Mullins or Mr. Um, Noel's, the, their links are on the chat. Okay, Mrs. Futrell, do we want to get started? Yes, we can get started. Okay, so there seems to be a couple questions already. One is, please explain the senior testing day on 1014, since the College Board rejected the attempt to issue SAT privately. So we applied to be a private test site on a Saturday. So it would be the exact same SAT that is given but we didn't want to invite um, the public because if we invited, if we opened it up to the public, there was no guarantee the BG students wouldn't get closed out. Um, so we, um, they told us we could do, be a public test site on Saturday and we said no, because we don't, we wanted to make sure our students got service. So because that took so long for that, we went back and forth about the private test site, um, we um, were able to recently, last week sometime, um, be able to apply for the October 14th um, in-school testing day. Now, the reason we didn't do that, there's another one on the 23rd. Um, we decided not to do that because it would disrupt the whole school. We would have had to close school that day in order to test the seniors because it's a four hour test. It's the SAT, just like you take on a Saturday, but it would have disrupted the whole school. And we want to have a good testing environment for the seniors. Because all the other students are doing the PSAT on the 14th, it seemed like a better date for us to do it. So we are going to repurpose sort of how we do the freshmen and, and the sophomores and make sure the testing environment for the juniors and the seniors, the juniors for the PSAT, because that's the National Merit Qualifying Test and for the seniors will be uncompromised. So um, this, this SAT school day is exactly the same as the SAT on a Saturday, but we can guarantee that it's just the BG students. And that's why we went with that. So I hope that answers that question. Um, and I believe you can unmute now, I believe. So does anybody else have a question? Um, let's see. Okay, let me see here. Um, okay, so I, I guess you can't unmute. So can you just write, type in your questions for us? That would be great. <clears throat> okay. Um, can I, can we explain how students will get access to merit scholarship money? As I explained, that's a question on the, on the chat. As I explained, merit money is decided by the admission office based on um, qualifying candidates, whatever they feel is their merit money. When I was in college admissions, we had four um, pure merit um, scholarships, a presidential scholarship. There were a couple dean scholarships, um, and then there were 
um, ac just academic scholarships. Um, we chose them from the admission office based on the criteria in which the admissions office determined. Um, it's not just a given because you apply and you have good grades, you're going to get a merit scholarship. Um, sometimes it's masked in things like um, extra financial aid or an act, like a, a dean's award or something like that. Um, but it all depends on the college. Uh, every college does it differently. Um, so student, every student who applies to a college or university, if that college or university has merit monies to award, is a candidate for merit money, basically. Um, and so the colleges determine that criterion. Um, let's see, please type questions to everyone. Yes, please. So then so the next one is the SAT on October 14th. The students do have to sign up for the SAT on the 14th and the deadline is next Tuesday. So September 15th is the deadline. We need to have a count for the number of students. So yes, there is a deadline to sign up and there's also a fee of $55 for that test and it's only for seniors. That link will be open tomorrow um, for parents because there is a cost and you can pay by your cre by credit card. Um, some colleges are offering tours on weekdays. Can seniors take any days away? Excuse from BG with advance notice to, to tour colleges. Um, you can call a student in as absent that day. We used to have five days that the students could go and, and visit colleges. Um, we don't do that anymore. If you call in and you bring some, uh, some kind of signed document back from the college, the student can participate in athletics or activities that afternoon. If you don't, the student can't, because um, it's, it's not really an excuse to absent. It's an absence, it's a choice. Uh, yes, students can go and visit colleges on weekdays, um, as long as you call them in absent. So there's a question about so if a student signed up for the SATs in another school, can they switch it to the 10, 14th day? I know the answer to that. Um, you could, if you wanted. I don't think they're gonna automatically switch you. Um, they may charge you an extra fee because the school, the in-school testing is a program that they is, is separate from Saturday SATs. I know it sounds ridiculous, but it is. It's a separate program. Um, so um, they may charge you, they may not. Um, you'd have to look at, you'd have to check that out on the information site on the college board. Um, for guidance in compiling school lists, um, because you can't visit schools, um, which I know is really difficult right now because being there is so much more than seeing it online, um, we will help students as much as they need. Um, so we will sit down, we can do the virtual tours with them, um, we can compile lists, we can talk about schools that they, um, you know, the interest in what they want to do, how far they want to go, what they want to study. Um, really, we just need to set up appointments and work through the process. So we will do as much as the students are willing to work with us. Um, some students have done quite a bit um, on their own with their families already. Some students, you know, want more, of a, more help from us. Some students want less, so it's really what the students want. Um, but we will work with them, you know, and compile those lists based on what they share of, you know, anything that they want. So if they want big school, small school, far from home, close to home, if they know they want to do electrical engineering, we'll look at that, we'll do, you know, the online visits. There are some schools that are doing very limited visits. If you look online, they might do tours of very small groups. So there are some schools doing that. And there are some schools that are allowing you to drive through, which isn't necessarily the same, but it still gives you an idea of what the campus is like. So um, that is at least a little bit of, I guess, an idea of what the school is like, but we will do as much as the students want us to do in terms of helping students um, compile that list and figure out what they might like for schools. Um, yeah. Does the SAT include all the components of the SAT? There's a couple SAT questions here. I'm going to put it all together. Does the SAT include all the components of the SAT? What is the turnaround to get the SAT, ACT scores back? And do we register for SAT on College Board website or on MyBG? You're going to register through the link we're sending out tomorrow morning, not the College Board. They, it's a separate program in the sense of 
how you register. That's it. The SAT is exactly the same as the SAT you would take on Saturday. It has all the components. If a student wants to take the SAT with the essay, you have to just let us know that. Email me personally because that's an extra cost um, to take it with the, with the, with the um, essay. It also uh, adds another 35 minutes to the test. Most schools do not require the essay portion of the SAT. In fact, I don't really know any that says you absolutely have to have that. So unless it's a certain program that I don't know about, which could very well be, I don't know everything. So it, I very well be, but um, I, it, it's, a, it's a, a long process to do it with the essay. And it's not necessarily a, a component that, that it, most schools use. Um, and so um, the SAT, ACT scores come back usually within three weeks. Um, so the October 14th deadline is, is fine for November 1st or November 15th deadline dates. Colleges are not standing like with a big catcher's mitt waiting for all these applications to come flying through the internet on, on November 1st. They still have to process everything. They, if the student puts down on their on their common application that they are taking the SATs and they want the SATs to be evaluated, then they will wait for those scores to begin. We recommend the student leave that part blank because you don't know what the scores are and you may not want to have the scores evaluated, especially in a test optional situation. Okay, so um, you don't have to put that on but colleges typically will wait for um, a, an SAT score. So it's not like they have to, they have to all be there at the exact same time. So the October 14th date is, is a, a perfect date for the SAT. Hi, can you hear me? I can. Oh, great. I managed well, to hold unmute. On, there's, hold on one second, okay? Because there's more questions. Uh, Mrs. Cronin, um, we will talk to, um, you can talk to Lisa about that privately. Okay. Okay, go ahead. So the question is still around the SAT. Um, so you have one on October the 14th. Um, I think my daughter signed up for October 3rd SAT, right? Mm -hmm. um, we had planned to do two SATs, one, right? The one in August got canceled. Would you advise to do back-to-back -back October 3rd and October 14th? Well, for mental health reasons, I would have- Yeah, exactly, that. just to torture her. Yeah, no, I wouldn't torture her. Okay, uh, uh, damn it. It might be the only time that you get to take them. So um, if, you, if, if it's essential that you feel that there has to be two SAT scores, um, have at it. I think that's a lot for students, but- mm -hmm. Okay. That's gonna and then, be a decision you make as a family. Okay, and then one final question from my side. Um, you mentioned that, and, and we were discussing that at the weekend about uh, taking whether the score should be considered. Um, so if we take no, do we still have the option to submit the SAT for consideration? If you check no, it's not. Sorry. You to, if you check no on the application, unless you tell them otherwise, it's gonna be no, they won't look at them. So, but you can call them. Okay. Because we don't know at the time of app applying, right? We don't know what this, we may not know what the scores are. So well, just to give us some flexibility. Well, there's a good chance if she's taking them October 3rd, she, you would have the scores back. Okay. By the time you have to apply. Remember, it's, it's like 1159 November 1st, PM, 11.59 PM. Now I wouldn't wait that long. <laughs> But okay. um, it's 11.59 p.m. So you would probably have the scores back. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. You're welcome. Colleges right. that do not use the Common App, are they similar in format? Questions, what should we expect? They are very similar in format and questions. Um, they might not be as in-depth as the, the Common App for some of them. It really depends on the school that you're applying to. There are some schools that may not be as competitive that are much less as in depth. And then there may be those schools that are highly competitive that are much more um, intense and in depth. So it really depends on the college and what they're looking to get from their application. Um, but for the most part, a lot of the questions are very similar. 
Um, so, you know, there'll be information about the school that you're at, the classes you've taken. Um, there may be, an, there's usually an essay um, attached to it, so you can expect that. Um, and there may be supplemental questions. Um, so for the most part, they do have generally the same information. Um, so, you know, my rule of thumb is if you can use the Common App and most of the schools are gonna take that, then I would stick with that, um, you know, that format. Um, for students that might be going um, out west or down south, if you look and you see the Coalition App is the one that most of the schools are using, then I would use that one if, if you're going to um, a school, schools that focus on that. So use the one that's more dominant, but the Common App seems to be the one that most of the kids will use. The coalition we've heard from students tends to be a little bit more confusing in some areas. Um, I'm not sure if they've fixed it, um, but the Common App is pretty straightforward and, and pretty easy. There's also a new feature on the Common App, which I failed to mention, um, but there is a section for COVID. And so we are going to instruct the students because BG was on top of everything in terms of academics and maintaining the rigor with COVID in the spring. Um, and even this fall with the academic piece and being in class and not, um, you know, kind of letting things go by the wayside. Um, so we are gonna, you know, put something together for the students to put in that COVID spot in their application so they can say that they went right back to work they had their assessments, they did their homework, everything was online, they were meeting in classes so that they can see that our, our students were still maintaining that same academic rigor the minute they left the, the doors and went home um, because a lot of students didn't, that, didn't have that. Um, and it shows in their transcript because we maintained our, our grades. So um, we think that's important for them to note, not only on the Common App, but we're also gonna have that, um, as we said in previous meetings, on our, um, our school profile, as well as we're gonna put it on our letters of recommendation. So they're gonna get all that information all over the place so that they know just how, how strong our students are at BG. And that, that's a, a big advantage um, yes. to our, studi to our, our students. Um, there's another question. You mentioned that schools will take a more holistic view of the student in the absence of SAT, ACT scores. Will they conduct interviews or rely solely on materials within the application? Will the essay matter more in this situation? So here's, here's something I, I really want you, I'm hoping you will hear me say. SATs and ACTs have never been a deciding factor in college admissions. Nor are AP scores. What is the most important thing? It is a factor, but it's not a deciding factor. What is the most important thing and has always been is the curriculum the student has engaged in for their years in high school. Have they challenged themselves? Have they had rigor? Have they done well? Have they improved? Have they consistently, consistently tried to do their best by maintaining a certain level of courses. That is the most important thing. The next thing that they look at is what has the student done while they're in high school? Have they been involved? Have they worked? Have they um, done community service? Have they been an athlete? Have they been whatever? Have they had leadership? Um, have they volunteered at their church? Then they look at the essay. Those are the important components of, of the, of the um, candidate's application. That is not changing. The SATs help sort of equalize the playing field a little bit. Not always, because we have lots of really good students that are just not great at standardized testing. And we have other students that really didn't bring it every day, but they could manage a, a a standardized test. So colleges look at would look at that, and there's lots of times, even though an SAT was required for admission, was not part of the admissions evaluation because there are other factors that really brought the student forward in the process. So this is no different than any other year. The difference is 
there are more schools that are really going to look at these kids' application and really see what this student is all about because that factor isn't there anymore. And that's what College Admissions is, has, has been trying to move toward for 25 years. There have been really, really, really strong schools that have been test optional for 25, 30 years when I was in college admissions. I know that I'm ancient. That was a long time ago. Uh, but the point being is that this, is, this can be really good for students. This is not going to disadvantage them. They're gonna to have to work a little harder maybe on their essay to make sure that they're really nailing it. And that's what we're here for. That's why we'll help them. Other questions? Mrs. Futrell, if you do you want to say anything about how you're going to work with your students and then I'll do my little speak piece? Because I only have a few here. <laughs> well, I, you know, I have met with um, a number of my senior students. Um, I met with some over the summer. I've met with some um, so far the, the past couple of weeks since we've been in school. Um, you know, I've put out notes. I actually sent an email to all of my seniors saying, you know, if you need me, I hope you're, you're started off well, let me know. Um, and I've gotten, actually I got quite a few responses, but the questions have been, you know, more about I'm working on my application, you know, what about this, what about that? Um, but my door is open to meet with them. So um, I'll be sending more, you know, specific emails, but they don't have to get an email from me to come down. They can email me at any time. Um, and say, you know, I want to set up a meeting to go over this, or I have a question about this. Um, if they don't want to meet in person, um, I mean, I have social distancing in my office, but we can do Zoom, we can do whatever they're comfortable with. Um, and I can answer all their questions. Um, I've made lists for some students. I know some are very anxious to get the ball rolling. Um, and since we don't have like the transcript release form ready, um, I've already put it in a queue saying, you know, I want to make sure these students are ready. So once that's done, I'm going to, you know, make sure they get access to that. So, um, you know, we've got everything ready to go. I just, you know, if they want to come in and work with me, um, we're, we're ready. So we just need to get that ball rolling. Um, and I know that they're, they've been, I don't say overwhelmed, but there's been a lot of changes and they're getting used to the different flow of the hallways and the, the class schedule. And, um, you know, so there's been a lot that's been going on. So I think now that we're settled in school and there's a routine, um, I think I'm gonna start seeing a lot more of them, but please encourage them to um, come on down or send me a note um, because I'm, you know, I'm there to, to work with them and do whatever they need me to do with them. Um, but if I don't know they have questions, then I can't help them with those questions. Um, and I know some students have applied early already. Um, we don't have all the information yet to send out, but we do send things out as soon as we can so that we can send those to the colleges. But um, we certainly, I'm looking forward to going through this process because it's a lot of fun. I know it's overwhelming, but it's a lot of fun to go through this process with the kids. And I love to see you know, where they start and where they end up and go through all the emotions. Um, because it is, you know, I've been through it twice with my kids. I have two girls that are in college now. Um, and it's a very, you know, it's stressful and overwhelming, but to see them go through the process and then to the final results, it's really, it's a fun thing to do. So, um, you know, I'm looking forward to working with, with everybody. So um, please encourage them to make appointments with me. And there's a couple more questions. One, I, I'm sorry I missed um, with the, the one about the um, SAT and relying on the application a bit more. Um, interviews from colleges conducting interviews. That's going to be tricky this year. A lot of the college campuses are closed, as you probably know, if you were trying to make some visits. But typically, there is an admissions person assigned to the area or the school, and they will do a Zoom call with the student. So feel free to investigate that. Um, and, and they're really kind of low key. Thing about college interviews is they really just want to get to know the applicant a little bit better. Um, so um, take advantage of that. Um, and again, you can find that on their websites. 
Um, but there were times where admissions people would meet kids in Panera and do an interview. That's probably not going to happen this year. Um, so you, I think they're looking at other ways to, to reach out. Um, for students who are remote, should we try to schedule a phone or Zoom appointment with their counselor? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, we wanna make sure all the students are taken care of the same way and, and we wanna make sure that they're on track as well. So please, please, please um, Zoom often. <laughs> um, uh, we have a couple transfer questions. Um, I met with a couple of the transfer seniors already um, and they're, they're pretty much, they're, the ones I've met with so far really have been very impressive and are, are staying on track. Don't worry, I will keep them on track. Um, I work with the senior transfer students as well as the international students. So um, I will do my best to keep them on track as I, as I tell them all. And as Mrs. Futrell saying, our door is always open to seniors. Um, we, you know, we know they have busy schedules. And so we, we make ourselves pretty available for our senior students. Um, Another question, do colleges start reviewing applications as soon as they get them? What is the benefit of applying early? Great question. Um, as I said, um, colleges aren't waiting November 1st to like load up their, their um, queue. What happens is that the deadline, um, the deadlines for early are typically anywhere from October 15th to December 1st. And colleges will read between that time. So if it, the deadline is November 1st, Colleges will read so that they can give um, decisions for early action or early decision by usually right before Christmas, around December 20th. Um, decisions will start come out, come out, start to come out. Some will come out after Christmas, but they do try to try to get them out um, around that time frame, which is great because then Plan B can go into effect if it didn't work out, and it's like woohoo, happy holidays if if you Merry Christmas if you if you get in. So it's all good. Um, the advantage of applying early is just that At early decision there that that's a different that's a different piece so I'll talk about early action first early action allows the student to apply to as many schools as they want early and they hear early so it sort of reduces the the anxiety a little bit sooner as to whether or not you know somebody wants them for college um, to go there to their campus um, and also, like I said, if things aren't working out the way plan A was supposed to, we can put into effect plan B and there's still time to do that. Early decision is very different because as Mrs. Futrell was sharing um, with all the families, um, it is a binding contract. So the idea is if you apply early decision to a college, you sign a contract, the student signs a contract, the counselor signs a contract that says, if that student is accepted to that college, they're going, regardless of whether or not they can afford it. So you're, you, you really have to be very, very cautious about applying early decision, because the notion there is that you've researched this school completely, and it is the only school that this student really wants to go to. That's an early decision candidate. That, so if, it, if the student breaks the contract, oftentimes colleges will, will let other colleges know that are similar in their tier of schools that the student broke the ED contract. And that can jeopardize a student's ability to apply and get into those other schools. So it, it's a very tricky thing, early decision. So that's a conversation that you absolutely wanna have with the school counselor because it really has some repercussions if it, if it goes south. But if it's the school of choice and everything's great and you really want, your son or daughter really wants to go there and you've figured out the finances, then apply early decision and then it's over with. Everything's over, you don't have to apply to more colleges. So there's some, there's some benefits to it as well. And the student potentially may get into the school of their choice. So that's, that's all great. Any other questions? So for my students, like Lisa, um, you know, we, we are available, but also we do want you to know that the counselors at Bishop Girton write a letter of recommendation for every one of their seniors. Um, regardless of the type of school they're going to, we write a re letter of recommendation for every single student. Um, so that's why um, the counselors were talking earlier about get, gathering information from them, spending time with them, 
getting to know them. Um, that's very important when you're writing a college recommendation. So um, that's why we're, we're meeting with them early. We're, we're trying to make sure that we understand where they're coming from um, so we can write the very best um, recommendation possible. And our job is to do that. Our job is to put, even when they've had a couple blips or some trials, to put that in the most positive light possible. Um, it's not hard because we really think our kids are great. So it's not, this is not a burden except that there's a lot of them. But other than that, um, they, it's great to, to, this is sort of what, when working with these kids for as many years as we do, it's, it's kind of the fun part of our job. Um, if a student gets accepted during early action, is there a timeline for when they respond? In other words, can they still apply to other schools for reg regular decision? Yes, that's the great thing about early action. It's not a binding contract. So the, um, the, student doesn't have to deposit to or, or make a commitment until May 1st. So with early decision, the student has to make the, make the commitment right away. With early action, they don't. So that's the nice part about it. And yes, you can apply um, regular decision. Can you have early action for a single college? Um, there is an early action policy at Yale, I think it is, that it's a, a single early action. Um, it's, it's a weird, it's, it's very weird. That's not typically how it is. Um, so early action, there's lots of schools that have early action and there's no um, limit on how many you can apply early action to. But watch the, the admissions for the IVs and the small IVs, there's some tricky, there's some tricky language. Um, but yes, early decision is one college. Yes. Only one college, one college only. Anything else? Well, it's getting late, so we want to thank you so much for being with us. Lisa, is there, these are mostly your parents, so is there anything else you'd like to say? No, I, you know, I'm glad to be back in school because I miss seeing the kids, so I'm really looking forward to this year. So um, please encourage them to come on down and make an appointment. Um, and for those students that are not in, um, make an appointment to Zoom because I'm willing to do that as well. So, um, and thank you everyone for coming. It was a great night. I appreciate it. Yeah, we, we truly do. Thank you for being here. And um, if anybody needs to get in touch with us, just 